I don't know of a drink that tells me more about a bartender's professional philosophy than this one. There are so many different ways to make it, and they're all kind of correct, so it's like a cocktail Rorschach test. I am Rob Report's resident bartender, Jason O'Brien, and this is The Sidecar. So the sidecar at its core is just a sour. So basically it goes like this. You take something real sour, like lemon juice, and balance it against something real sweet, like simple syrup. And you lay the spirit on top, and it's really easy balance, and it's the same every time. And your whiskey sour, and your pisco sour, and the margarita, and mojitos, and daiquiris, is all the same drink. Just again and again, just with slightly different ingredients, but it's always the same balance. So a sidecar is a sour, except with orange liqueur instead of sugar syrup, or simple syrup. Simple, right? Wrong, because a good orange liqueur is one, 80 proof, and two, less sweet than sugar. So as you're adding sweetness, you're also adding proof points, and now you have to worry about not just too sweet or too sour, but also too strong. And this is what helps account for the dizzying amount of recipes out there. The original, in 1922, in a book by a guy named Robert Vermeer, all the early book names are so incredibly dull, the book is called Cocktails, How to Mix Them. And he says a sidecar is equal parts. It is one part each, lemon juice, orange liqueur, and brandy. And then eight years later, Harry Craddock says, no, 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 it's too sweet and it's too much liqueur, it's too orangey. So no, a proper sidecar is two parts brandy, one part each, lemon juice, and orange liqueur. And then like 20 years later, David Embry says, no, 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 no. all of that is too sweet. It is eight parts brandy, two parts lemon juice, and only one part liqueur, which is insane. That is a terrible drink. Don't ever make it that way. So what I did is that I made them all. I made as many as I could side by side, different brandies, different orange liqueurs, different ratios. And the one I'm gonna show you today is the one that I think is the absolute best. So we start with some fresh lemon juice. And we're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of fresh juice. This is going to be the sour part that I told you about. And now, the big question is what orange liqueur to use. So right away, we can just ignore the ones that are less than 80 proof. And the choice is basically between two. We got Cointreau and Pierre Ferrand Dry Carousel. So the difference here is that Cointreau, like all triple sex, is vodka-based, neutral spirit-based. Cointreau has very dry, very precise orange notes, whereas Curacao has those orange notes, but it also has everything that comes with brandy. This is spice and oak and vanilla. And I like Cointreau better almost every time. The one variation here is that if you're dealing with a brandy that's not very old, like a VS Cognac, that little boost of the Curacao might be better for you. But most of the time with a well-aged Cognac, it's redundant and it clashes. It's like playing two great songs at the same time. It's not better. So we're not gonna use the Curacao. For my favorite sidecar, it is one ounce of Cointreau. And the Cointreau is gonna offer this lifting, clean orange precision that just radiates out of this drink. Now for brandy, our options widen a bit. I like this drink with almost every brandy I tried it with, but I think it's best with a well-aged VSOP cognac like Hein Rare. As you age cognac more, the inherent fruit qualities of the brandy start getting suppressed and the rich oak and uh, spice and vanilla that you're kind of looking for in a lot of age comes out and that's when this drink is its best possible self. So whatever brandy you use, we are doing one and a half ounces of it. Younger brandies are okay. They're just maybe a little uninspired. I did not have something I thought was too old. I tried it with an XO Cognac. I tried it with a 20 year Spanish brandy. They were all excellent. So how old, how nice of a Cognac to use? Depends on how much you want this drink to cost you. But for me, a nice VSOP like this is the perfect sweet spot. And that is a sidecar. Now all we do is add some ice and shake it up. You don't want to overshake this guy, just like six or eight seconds, maybe up to 10, but definitely not longer than that. And sidecars are always up in a cocktail glass. And for a garnish, I like to make those orange notes pop with just a bit of an orange peel expressed over the top of the drink and dropped in. And this is a sidecar. Let's see how we did.
You see, there's a bunch of different ways to make this. Everything that you find in a professional book is gonna be good. The reason I like this so much is because it's got the strength that you expect from a sidecar. Sidecars are supposed to put you on your heels a little. It's supposed to be a little too tart and a little too strong. And with a well-aged cognac, the oak is in the background, the bright orange up front, the, the lemon juice is kind of keeping it bracing, and it's just, it feels like grown up drinking. I also like this recipe because it doesn't need any extra sweetness. So what a lot of people do with their recipes is that they'll top it off with a teaspoon of simple syrup, or they'll just crust the outside of the rim with granulated sugar like it's a lemon drop or something. And that's fine, that's a way to solve that problem, but this recipe makes it balanced in the drink itself, so we just don't even have to worry about any of that. For me, at its best, the sidecar is a touch too strong and a touch too tart and is the absolute platonic ideal, best conceivable way to start a weekend. Cheers.